Shalom, all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Kadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of the great millstone that rule well through the scriptures. Peace to the 144,000 and the rest of the hopeful elect. I'm the brother Kaya from GMS, Indianapolis, branch of Indiana. The other two camps is GMS Bloomington and GMS Gary. And I'm here to do a lesson on this image you see on screen. Uh sundown today brought in the day of atonement all right and um you know it's a high holy day for us israelites you israelites is the so-called negroes latinos and native americans and uh the day of atonement is a is a day in which we we afflict our souls and the way that we do so is we go on a fast all right we we, we consume Nothing, no food, no drink, no, no powders, no vitamins, you know, nothing to, uh, in the hopes that the Lord will, will see what we're doing and accept it as an atonement for our sins. All right. And, uh, this lesson is not about that per se. Like I said, it's about the picture on screen, but today is the day of atonement. So. I, I must mention it now on screen. You see uh, basically a snapshot. You know, it was in our group. I'm pretty sure it's in, um, you know, various other brothers groups. And uh, when you check out the background, like you see at the bottom left corner, it says peep the background. All right. It's an omen. All right. Our scripture is in the background. Now, why did I say our scripture? Well, first of all, the Bible belongs to us anyway. All right. This is our book. Baruch, the fourth chapter says, give not what is profitable to thee unto another. So this is ours. All right. And on a deeper level, us of here at Great Millstone under the tutelage and the guidance of the apostles and the elders and the various men, we always bring out Isaiah 33 and 6. All right. We always bring Isaiah 33 and 6 out as it pertains to the Lord shielding us from the brunt of what's about to come. Of what's about to come. What Jeremiah 30 and 7 known as it calls it Jacob's trouble. All right. And Jacob like is the Israelites, our forefather, his name got changed to Israel. So you see this debate, you see our scripture in the background. I'll, I'll get it in a second. So it ends. We believe it ends with one of these two. We don't know who. Me personally, I feel like uh, uh, Kamala will, will, will if she gets elected, the pot will be stirred. Even more. Because people are, um, what you call it, pacifists and, and, and soft. But either way, the will of the Lord is going to be done anyway. All right. So without further ado, let me grab something because I said it was an omen. Right. I was looking up this guy. He made a song with the name of the Most High in it. Yeah. Jericho RCO. Uh, Filipino. Song is in Tagalog, but it says the Most High's name and his son's name. What is the definition of an omen? A happening believed to be a sign or a warning of some future event. Exactly. So we believe, you know, this is an omen. The fact that they got, if you look at the background, it says, if you can make it out, the writings uh, by the American flag in the background, it says, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Now, that is, a, that is in Isaiah 33 and 6. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll grab it in my Bible real quick. I may read a verse up or a verse below. All right. Let's see. Yeah, okay, I'll start at verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. So what? 
the bad times that's on his way. You know, people got this vain hope that it's about to get better. No, we're about to get much, much, much worse. All right. And it says, and, sh and strength of salvation. So this wisdom and this knowledge that we hold, this is the, the strength or this is what gives us the resolve. All right. To keep pushing in the hopes of being saved. It says, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. All right. Yahweh Shah said what? Where a man's treasure is, there is his heart also. Your heart is your mind. So what your what occupies your mind is what you value. Okay? The Lord said he will beautify. He let me grab this real quick. Lord said he will beautify us with salvation with salvation. Psalms 149 and 4. For the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let me look up beautify for that scripture. Let me see what they say. Let me see. Beautify, pa'ar, to glorify, beautify, adorn, to glorify oneself, to get glory to oneself. All right? And that's what we're hoping for. All right? We're hoping for glory. All right? Uh, verse 7. And uh, back in Isaiah, let me put an image back up. Back in Isaiah 33 and 7. Behold... Their valiant ones shall cry without. What do valiant mean? Valiant mean mighty. Matter of fact, let's just pull that up so we can grab some of these words. I started from six with the, you know, when wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. Behold, now it's going into the, 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 the day of the Lord, the darkness and not light. Because Jeremiah, uh, Isaiah 33 and 6, it all lines up with uh, Jeremiah 30 and 7, Amos, is it 5 and 19? We'll grab those. It says, Behold, their valiant ones shall cry without. The ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. All right? So a valiant one is a, our all. A hero. All right? So the he the so the heroes gonna suffer, all right. Uh, uh, mighty men, you know, great warriors, you know, people uh, people who are innovative, right. The ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. The high the highways lie waste. The wayfaring man ceasing. What do wayfaring mean? Traveling. So it ain't gonna be no traveling. Okay, wayfaring man, I bar to pass over or by or through a bring care a, a traveler. All right. In context, the highways lay waste. Ain't gonna be people ain't look. Look, the, the art imitates life. All right, what is art? Those movies, the road. Okay, the book of Eli. The Divide, 28 Days Later, all these various uh, uh, World War Z, all these apocalyptic movies imitate a reality near you. It says, the highway is like waste, the warfare man ceasing. He hath broken the covenant. Another word for covenant is treaty. Yeah, and these politicians, they don't, <laughs> they don't execute none of the lies they promise you. Right, why would they? They're lies. <laughs> he have despised the cities. He regardeth no man. The earth mourneth and languisheth. Lebanon is ashamed and hewed down. Sharon is like a wilderness. And Bashan and Carmel shake off their fruit. So the, the world is through. All right? And a lot of these is uh, 
represents the land in Israel, Lebanon, or Sharon, Bashan, and Carmel, they threw. All right? Ever since those gutter rats was over there, it's, it's been falling into more and more and more decay. Okay? So, let's jump to Jeremiah 30 and 7. And yeah, the, the scriptures are, or not the scriptures per se, but you can say that. We sound like a broken record because we're bringing out these same scriptures because they're, they're breathing, they're living. See, the Bible is alive because... As we speak and as we read what it says, it's happening. Okay? Jeremiah 30 and 7. Alas, for that day is great. All right? What day is that? So that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. How is he going to be saved out of it? Because the wisdom and the knowledge... Is going to be the stability when those times come. All right? Let's see what they got for that word stability in the Hebrew. Let me see. Ah, my faith, right? Ah, my wana. Sound like it's the sound like the feminine form of faith, which that would be Amawan. Firmness. That means rigid. Fidelity. That means faith. Infidelity mean without faith. Right? Steadfastness. Not easily moved. Steadiness. So you're gonna remain in the truth. Alright? When 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 storms and winds come and beat upon you. All right, the house, you're not going to fall because you were built on a solid foundation. You was built on a rock, and that rock being Yahweh by Shimei So you're going to be good. Let me see. Let me grab another one. Yeah, then maybe it's in this app. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. It's a it's a scripture I'm thinking of. It's a couple of them actually that I'm thinking of, and they kind of word it similarly. And I'm trying to get the exact one. Okay. This is Psalm 16 and 8. This is a good one, not the exact one. I have set the Lord Yahweh always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Yeah, this wisdom and this knowledge is what you lean on. You know, your right hand man is the, the, your, your first and foremost uh, trusted, you know, advisor or counselor. So the wisdom and the knowledge of the Lord is at your right hand. Okay. And for that, you shall not be moved. Okay. Uh, Psalm 46. Let's see what this say. Psalm 46 and 1. To the chief musician for the sons of Korah. And if I'm not mistaken, Moses came from the line of Korah as it, as it pertains to the Levites. All right. Levi was, uh, was, it? It was Korah, Merari. You know, let's do a little quick little Cora, Marari, and Gershon, I want to say. Let me see. Or was it Kohath? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Was it Kohath? I might be mistaken. Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Okay, so like you, I was wrong. It's Kohath. It says, a song upon Alamoth. The Most High is our refuge and strength. A refuge is where you go in a time of trouble. You're like a refugee. 
your comp your your you know homeland is riddled with war and violence and pestilence and then you come somewhere where it's safer you know the most high is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble yeah a very present help he's there all right Remember uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three holy children, which their names were uh, Mishael, uh, Anan Hananiah, and Azariah? This is the night we're going to do some fact checking uh, just to make sure. All right. Yep. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Right. That's what they that's their proper names. You remember they was in the uh in the fiery furnace? And uh, Nebuchadnezzar said, I thought you put three in there. I see four. The, there's a there's another one in there who looked like the son of man. All right. Yahweh Shai was a very present help. In, that, in their time of trouble right then and there. And there's many other examples. It says, therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed. See, some things about to come. You know, what can remove the earth? All right. 46, uh, Psalm 46 and 2. Let's look that up in Hebrew. Let's just stand here so we can get the Hebrew words. We'll see what they got for removed. Let me see. Isaiah 46 and 2. No, Psalm 46. Let's see what they got for removed real quick. I'm just, you know, let me see more war. To change, alter, change, to alter by implication, to barter, to dispose of. Okay, all right. I like the good. Let's see. To change, to exchange, to buy, to sell. To exchange anything, to change. We will not fear, though the earth should change itself, to be changed, right? So, the earth has been altered through all type of things, you know? But what's one thing that can change and really alter the earth? Does nuclear missile technology, all right? The scripture speaks about how the earth will rock to and fro like a drunkard. What can make the earth rock to and fro? Missiles. Okay. It says, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, what can make all of that happen? All right. The destruction of World War III Coupled with the return of Yahweh Shai as well. All right. Habakkuk, the third chapter, goes into that. Though the mountains shake with the swelling of Selah. All right. So amongst chaos, amongst whatever happens, the hopeful elect is not going to falter. Okay. The book of Sirach, the second chapter. Which the whole chapter goes into that. Okay. I'm going to jump around into it though. But this is a beautiful chapter to read in its entirety. It's really hard not to really read into it. But I'm going to jump around in it. So rock two and two. It says set thy heart aright and constantly endure. And make not haste in time of trouble. Alright. Because if you make haste in time of trouble. You're not being steadfast. All right. You sacrificing your integrity. For whatever reason, not trusting in the Lord. Like when you read in the scriptures, there was a great famine and a donkey's head went for a large sum of money. But first of all, you ain't supposed to be eating donkeys. So you may haste in a time of trouble when famine came. You lost your integrity by breaking the law of the Most High. When, when, there's, when there's accounts where he fed men miraculously. When he had uh, uh, ravens bring 
Elijah uh, bread or food. What is that? Uh, did they sting on bread? Yeah, it was bread. This is uh, 1 Kings 17 and 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord Yahweh, the power of Israel, liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning. So the, a lawful meat. Hell, it could have been chicken, lamb. And bread and flesh in the evening. Hell, he was eating twice a day. That's more than enough. And he drank of the brook. Twice a day is more than enough. In the morning, broom, bread. The best bread, too. Not this old gluten hack shit. Good bread. Hey, in the ancient world, bread was a healthy dish. Bread was very healthy. People didn't shy away from bread the way they do now. Bread is actually supposed to be very healthy for you. So you got good bread and flesh in the morning. And bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. All right, boom. So we have these examples, all right, to, and, you know, like, uh, what's that, Romans, uh, uh, what is it? I'll read it, hell. What is it, Romans 15 and 4, for, for, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. We could have hope that if we, Walk in the footsteps of our forefathers. The Lord can respond and act on our behalf the way he acted on theirs. And he acted marvelously on theirs. And he going to do the same thing. It's going to be even more grand. You know. But let me jump. Uh, uh, Sirach 2. I'm going to uh, jump to verse 6. Believe in him and he will help thee. Order thy way aright and trust in him. Now, how do you believe in him? You do what he say. All right? You do what he says to do. No matter how it, how it squeezes you. All right? No matter, because because we're going to feel the squeeze, all right? Remember, Peter felt it. Remember, he denied the Lord three times, but the Lord forgave him for that, all right? See, we're not, we're not, to, we're not to deny the Lord when we feel the squeeze at any capacity. The scripture says, uh, strive, un strive for the truth until death, and the Lord will fight for thee, all right? It says, ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy. So you got to play the waiting game with the most high. With Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh you got to understand. His ways are not your ways. His thoughts are not your thoughts. All right? And the Lord is also the king of drama. I like to think of the Lord. I like to think of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh with his, uh, you know, with his salvation and with his deliverance. As this scene in the movie, uh, if, if you're familiar with the, the movie Black Adam, which, you know, the movie is whatever, whatever. But I really enjoyed the first like 20 to 30 minutes of it when he first came and just was just like really destroying his, his enemies effortlessly. But there was a scene in there and the woman who awoke him. Was something was about to fall on her hand and fall on her head and crush her. And he just passively, like, effortlessly, like, 
destroyed it and prevented it, but it was like as an afterthought. So the scriptures, it makes me think of the scripture says the righteous shall scarcely be saved. Scarcely is like barely, like almost got, but he the Lord, he know all things. He control all things. All right. It's uh, this is a scripture that says when when they think the Lord is not of a full power. And I pray that, you know, we all give that a chance to, for the Lord, you know, just suffer and suffer and deal. And then when it when all hope is lost, when it seems like it's nothing left, he just respond, you know. Wisdom of Solomon 12 and 17. For when men will not believe that thou art of, art of a full power, thou showest thy strength. Like at the last moment, almost, right? And among them that know it, amongst the believers, thou makest their boldness manifest. So we, we that geek us up, hype us up. We, we embolden. Hell, we, we get more emboldened as time go on because... As this place go down, we rise, quoting the elder Yashiramba. All right, he said it a few times a while back. As this place fall, our value goes up. We are in the translation of a kingdom right now. A translation is a process oftentimes. All right? Esdras, at, at the time of Esdras, right? Second Ezra 6 and 9. At the time of Ezra, it says, For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. The hand of man is betwixt the heel and the hand. So it's in between. At this point in time, because remember, when Jacob and Esau was born, Jacob held the heel of Esau. All right? To represent that look. I'm 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 on your you know the term we got the phrase and now I'm on your heels basically mean I'm coming for you and eventually I'll surpass you so he was holding the heel when he was born at this point in time in Ezra's lifetime he was at uh it says what the hand of man is betwixt the heel and the hand so he's like somewhere in the middle and that was about 2500 years ago you know, so now look where we at now. We almost we we right there. We we a hand's breath away. Second Ezra six and ten. Let me see what the GNT say about that. Just curious to see. I want to read that in GNT second. Ezra six and ten. Now, Esau is the end of this age, and Jacob is the beginning of the age that follows. The beginning of a person is the hand, and the end of a person is his heel. Seek for nothing else, Ezra, between the heel. Seek for nothing else, Ezra, between the heel and the hand, Ezra. Okay. That's cool on that. Uh, so back in Sirach, uh, the second chapter. Uh... Yep, uh, verse 7. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy. See, you got to wait. And go not aside, lest ye fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see. Did ever... Any trust in the Lord and was confounded. And that's why we got these accounts. And not only do we have these accounts of the Bible, you know, like I just read about Elijah, like I quoted about uh, the, the three holy children, their Babylonian names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the actual names, because they were Israel, Hebrew Israelites, the actual names was Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. All right. Daniel in the lion's den. We have the biblical accounts and we have the accounts from the apostles, the elders, brothers across the world. Hey, uh, the sleep paralysis, right? What what 
this world society calls a condition, sleep paralysis, you treat it with medication. No, that's a demon. And I've battled it multiple times over the years as a child and as an adult. But when in, in this truth, uh, calling on your how about shimmy, I was shy, it went away. I didn't suffer from it. And I don't know how sleep paralysis feel for everybody, but I know for me, it was like, I am woke, but I can't, I have no control over my body. I can't open my eyes. I can't. And it's almost like you feel a presence there. You know? Yeah, you do. There's a presence there. But you, you're conscious. It's almost like you, you, like, as you dream, I don't want to get too esoteric, but it's almost like you in, you got your conscious. <laughs> anyway, anyway, if y'all felt dealt with sleep, I done dealt with it a handful of times. All right. And I know the last time I dealt with it, I called on the name of the, I called on the name of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And it went away. Cause I felt it coming on. I was I, I I was reading. I was studying. I was reading, and then it's like I felt like this presence trying to put me into that that feeling, that sleep paralysis feeling. And I got mad. If we being honest, like you know, like damn demon mess with me, and I called on the name of the Lord, and that went away. So that's an account, and we we have accounts from each other about how the Lord delivered brothers out of situations. It says, for the Lord, okay, look at the generation of old and see that ever any trust in the Lord and what's confounded, trusting in the Lord don't bring you to confusion. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to regret your decision. Like them people who took that you know what. They regretted it. All right. That's why I said uh, the opening scripture, Isaiah 33 and 6. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. That was in the back of that, uh, that, that, that picture. Okay. From the debate. Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Abide re means remain. So if you remain... In your fear of the Lord, all right, not being easily moved, being steadfast, he's not going to forsake you. Why would he do that? He, he don't do that. The Lord, the Lord is righteous. The Lord is just. He's not going to do that. It says, or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? All right? And righteousness. That don't mean you get to be a demon you just a demon who know the name of the Lord and you just frolicking about. No. Nah. And you know his name, you get to call on him. No. Nah. You call on him in sincerity and in truth. It says, verse 11, for the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, is full of compassion and mercy. The scripture says, for as his majesty, it might be this chapter here. It says, for as his majesty is, so is his mercy. You can't even number his majesty. You can't put a, you know how people be like, oh, this, this is priceless. Some guy threw something together and then another guy said, you know what? This is priceless. No, the, the, the Lord far excels that beyond human comprehension. Hell, beyond any comprehension. He's so indescribable. Look at what his name is. He is. Yahweh mean he is. <laughs> you know, it ain't enough. It ain't enough praise to, you know, and that's what that's what he compared his mercy to. And those that, you know, trust and fear the Lord and and suffer for him and, you know, try and put forth an effort, got a right to hope in that. You other people ain't got no right. The, the, the phonies and the fakers and, and all of that. It says, uh, and mercy, for the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. 
long suffering and very pitiful, meaning he'll have pity on you. And forgive of sins and save it in time of affliction. And affliction is on his way. The day of the Lord, Amos 5 and 18, 19. The day of the Lord is darkness and not light, even very dark with no brightness in it. Which that all coincides with Jeremiah 30 and 7. But at the end of the day, it says what? He shall be saved out of it. Who? The hopeful elect. So with that. Lord willing, this was an edifying lesson to the hopeful elect. All praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakudash, Shalom.